Hi guys, this is Marco and I'm gonna tell you about my last tournament and share with you how did I win the gold medal at the submission only tournament in Richmond. My division was the men's brown belt light and middleweight division. It was a combined division because my division was supposed to be 149 to 162. I weigh in at 160. But due to lack of brown belt competitors, they decided to combine the weight class, my weight class, lightweight, and the middleweight class, which goes from 162 to 175. We are three brown belts in this combined division. I think my opponents were from the middleweight because they look bigger. I don't know exactly the weight, but they were definitely bigger and they felt heavier than me. Maybe they cut weight and weigh in the night before. I don't know, but I weigh in the same day. I woke up early at 6 in the morning from Lisbon to Richmond with Spencer, Christian, and Susie. My plan was to compete in both the 30 plus and men's division, but they told me I could only sign up for one. So I had to choose between either compete with guys my age, I'm 37, or fight with the young guys. Um, the guy at the table told me that I could do more fights if I pick the men's division under 30. So I said, yes, put me in the men's division. I want to do more matches. And then I regretted. Right after I said that, I regretted. But I didn't change my mind. I just went for it. But online, I went to a submission-only tournament, won a gold medal, fighting against bigger and younger opponents. So in this combined light and middleweight division, we were a total of three brown belts. The other two guys were Kenny and Gil. Gil, you're gonna see him with a black E. He's from Revolution BJJ, and Kenny. He is from 5050, and you will see him with a Waigi. We were all going to fight with each other, and the one who tapped the other two was going to be declared the winner. The first fight was Kenny versus Gil, and Kenny footlocked Gil in less than 10 minutes. Uh, remember, this is submission only. No time limits. So two guys will go in and one is gonna be submitted. And the time is no matter. The time doesn't matter. So this is my first fight. First fight and this is Kenny's second fight. Uh, if Kenny submit me he will be the winner and I will have to fight with Gil to see who was gonna uh, be second and third place. If I beat Kenny in this uh, match that you are seeing right now, uh, I will also have to beat Gil to get the goal. So this is my fight with Kenny. Remember, this is no time limit, submission only this format is really good for me because it goes with my style and the Gracie Jiu Jitsu philosophy. Ramaster Elio used to say, those who do not lose can only win. So uh, he was a big proponent of being patient and waiting until your opponent make a mistake and you capitalize. Basically, um, 
energy, you have to be energy efficient. And I think part of me doing this tournament was uh, to try to prove this that patient, energy efficiency, uh, with the fans, you can defeat a bigger, stronger opponent. So here I am trying to pass Kenny's guard. Um, just, like I said, try to be patient. He has that Velahiva hook that a lot of people does. And thinking how to deal with it at this moment. Um, right there. Uh, I don't like that. His left foot hooked. So I got out. I don't know. I'm inside his open guard. Uh, he's got my sleeves uh, with a tight grip. And that's when he goes for a triangle right there. But since he has a, doesn't have my head, I posture and then he let go. I, I'm editing this because we stay there for a long time here. I'm trying to pass. And then he goes for that inverted guard. Or I'm sorry, deep half guard. That's what he's doing right there. So I'm thinking right now about passing his head to the other side and catch the arm lock. Yes, that's I'm doing that right now. My foot obviously caught, so he pushes and he's out. He escaped. My arm lock and passes. Uh, he passed my guard easy, and this is this is it. This is where I have to. Patient, then just don't get submitted. That's what I'm only thinking at this point. This is right there. Nice, I Marco. drop his arm and roll him. I don't know if he expected that. I stay on his guard for a long time. And here, after a few minutes, the fight, I'm still on his guard and I go for this uh, knee opening. He's trying to do that the Lahiba bar again, the Lahiba bar, and I'm trying to get my knee to the outside. I don't, I don't want that the Lahiba hook. And he's really being very, very aggressive trying to get it. And I think this is where I find an opportunity to pass his car finally, passing his car. The whole fight lasted around 10 minutes. So I'm passing his guard, trying to keep good pressure. And he has already escaped one time, so uh, right there he gives me the arm, and I have it now just to be patient. He's trying to roll back, but uh, he felt that, so I tried to keep my right leg heavy his body to prevent that roll back and try to open it at the same time, try to open the grips, but really keeping my energy, trying not to lose that arm bar, still trying to do that back roll, and he does something really clever here, he's just gonna let go and push my foot, he's holding his collar, and push my foot so now I have a less pressure and I thought really that he was gonna escape this armor. I have my leg heavy try to not to lose it. I'm holding my collar, breathing and I free my foot, that's when I push his bicep and I take the arm bar right there. So this was my first match with Kenny. I got him in an arm lock, and then I was going to have to beat Gil uh, in order to win the gold medal. So Kenny was a very good, tough opponent. I got my first win. Uh, go to my second match. Christian was coaching me. He's a really good coach. I like him by my side. Yeah, Christian is really into the fight and giving me 
good advice from the side. Spencer was there also. He was uh, also, I could hear him talking. And Susie uh, was recording. So I go into my second match versus Gil from Revolution BJJ. He's in the Black E. If I win this match, I will uh, get the gold medal. Kenny will get the silver and Gil will get the bronze. I thought since um, Gil beat, uh, I'm sorry, Kenny beat Gil and I beat Kenny, the logic will say that it will be easy for me to beat Gil, but he was really tough. This was the match that lasted for an hour and a half, maybe more. So he turned out not to be an easy opponent. Here I'm inside his guard and I'm defending the choke. Um, I edit it because the fight is too long. Here I'm trying to pass his guard. The whole time he had the, the La Riva hook on me and his the La Riva hook he will switch it to this half guard that it was really hard to pass and then he will set up the, the sweep. So he will get me with that through the whole of, uh, the whole fight. So I, I didn't know what to do from there to pass. Well, I, I, I knew I had to pass my leg, but um, I knew also that he was going to get the, the sweep, that he was working the sweep. So I'm working the collar to distract him a little bit. So that was a, a pattern during the fight. He was going for the La Hiba hook, uh, going to this half car and then right now it's not really a deep half car but it's uh, like uh, he gets really tight holding my foot and holding trying to grab my jacket underneath me to get the sweep or my other foot but I have the collar and then uh, I didn't want to squeeze because my grips were already a little bit weak from the that that's when he sued me. I, uh, I got sweat there, I switched my hips, I tried to free my foot somehow and then he got the sweat. So he's there in side mount and then he goes to mount. Uh, that pattern will repeat through the whole the whole course of the of the fight, him passing my guard, passing my guard, sweeping me with the De La Hiba or uh, he's from the half guard. I think he would really move us to the center and try to defend. And then, uh, yeah, he's going for the corner chop. I was going to tell you about my grips were, you know, a little bit weak from the first fight with Kenny already. But I have my hand there defending. So, uh, so uh, Gil here, his, uh, the La Hiba hook was, I felt that uh, stronger than, than that of Kenny's. I couldn't stop Gil's the La Hiba hook. I felt that uh, I did a pretty good job with Kenny's the La Hiba hook. So here, just be patient, basically, uh, he will just stop and try to get me something. Try to save my energies about, at this point, just, just be patient. I think I, I reverse him, but I'm just waiting for the, for the right opportunity. It's going for that cross collar choke. My hand is there. That's something that uh, Grandmaster Helson always teach. Have my feet ready to explode at any time. Trapping his food. So I think that I tried a hip bump to skip his mount. 
my pants fell off. They stopped the match. He, he passed first, he passed, and then they stopped to fix my pants. Um, and then I go down again, side mount, and then he would go to mount. And that was a pattern. He was, he was really tough, he had a lot of pressure. I felt space and escape, trapped his foot, back to guard, maybe not. Not even my open guard, but my, like I said, my grips were really gone, basically. And he had like good pressure, good grip. His grips were amazing. Um, he really never got tired after the, the hour and a half. Like that was my only my only hope was to hopefully he got tired. But he was pretty um, aggressive the whole time. Being the, the pressure. Here I have him inside my guard and trying to set up a combination, a combination of a choke with an armbar and climbing my legs and then um, also attacking the collar at the same time we cannot see from the same goal. So slowly working my my legs, uh, trying to go for the arm bar, but he put the knee on my hips, sat back down, pretty much that took the arm bar away. So, you see him here, he's probably my best player again. Yeah, good, good, good leg movements, good uh, grips on my legs. Again, uh, this is him going for the new belly now. Uh, I knew at this point that it was gonna there was gonna be a long fight because I knew that it was gonna be hard to there I escape. Here I tried to hook his leg but he had like really good hip switch. Never after he let me hook him. Just to be, he has a Kimura grip. But then I turn to this side. And I defend that. I try to regard right here. He has my pants. I tried to break the grips, but his grips on my pants were stronger. Really strong than, than my grips trying to prevent him to, to break his grips. I couldn't break his grips. See, I have one hand I'm trying to sleep right there. It's pretty solid. And then my, my legs were not stopping him. Again, for the mount. Pretty much there, I uh, I accepted the mount. I accepted the mount, so he's there attacking me. I'm gonna try to edit because it was a long, long time him waiting and me waiting too for for the escape. So he was being very conservative. And me too, there I drop and roll him. I think I drop and roll him like five times. That was the, the pattern. He would drop and roll him, he would sweep me, and then he would go on top, and then, and then over again. At this point, I'm trying to open his car. I, I don't want to push his legs and waste my energy so I'm trying to stand up maybe invite a sweep from him I'm trying to put the knee on the hips and open his legs were really strong he didn't he wasn't really opening and I'm trying to back 
like his neck, the collar. There he's opening, but he's going for that De La Hiba again, De La Hiba hook. But here, almost passing, but my knee is driving on the other side, trying to lift his leg. He was a pretty strong legs and good hip movement. Couldn't pass his guard. I could uh, during the whole fight I couldn't pass his guard. He's got that now that uh, sit up guard. I'm bugging the neck. I knew he he wanted my sleep on the right side to the sweep. I'm bugging his neck but Pretty much, I was. My leg was trapped. So he's trying to fit my my sleeve to his right hand. I'm bugging his neck. Finally, he got my uh, my lapel, maybe.
trapping my arm. And here I try to go and roll to the other side. And he's going for the armbar really. He wants the armbar really bad. I have my hands blocking his leg. And this is a, a technique that I that I all I learned from Hiro Gracie. And I was at the Hiro and Gracie seminar last week, the week before the tournament, so and we went over this skate again, so he really, he really was being uh, really helpful. But he had my pants, so I couldn't get up. But I'm trying to prevent the legs from coming on top of my head. Right there, one more time. I couldn't get up all the way into his guard because he, he had my, my pants. He, he wanted to also put his foot inside the hole right there and blocking that hole. So it's, a, it's a little game of blocking the leg from coming from on top. That's right there he give up the armbar and goes for the mount again. So my elbows heavy, blocking my neck, protecting my neck. Boom, drop and roll. This class we teach it to the new students. This is their first class, the first lesson we teach crazy combatives is the trap and roll. There I'm trying to stand up, put the knee on his hips, on his tailbone, like Master Hassel was knee on the tailbone, but he had that push, he will push and get his hips back. So I have to give up that too. It's gonna happen here and inside his car. The match was so long. Got my knees inside. I like that the knee is like pass and I'm trying to do that here. But his legs were all over the place. Controlling the hands were coming strong. His legs were coming strong inside. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to do a Toriana pass, have his pants, and then he got me with the, the La Giva again. This time he does like a very polo and goes on top. Very polo, he very polo. But it's alright, that was good. So I had to beat him in order to get the gold medal. And I was having problems. I was getting tired here. He's all up again, once again in the side mount. So I was thinking the whole time if at this point he still hasn't been able to submit me, then as long as I'm safe. Eventually, something will present for me. Here I escape the sign out. And nothing. Oh, going for a little arm bar there. Yeah, he defended my leg, he pushed my leg so I couldn't get his... Oh, triangle, no. I saw that coming, so... I tried to put the foot on the bicep, but... He was good at preventing that. It's probably gonna pass my car. Yep. So like I told you, telling you the pattern, him passing my guard, going for the mount or side mount, and me defending and trap and roll, trap and rolling him. So there he goes. He um, he was very stubborn with this color choke, I roll him once again, I roll him once again, he's setting up the color choke from the, from the top, like the right hand, anyway I was, I had my hand in my head, you can rewind this, see here, I'm trying something risky. I'm, I'm inviting the 
triangle. I want him to go for the triangle. I have my left hand inside his legs. This is a pass that uh, Mr. Helson show us one time and I used to I used to use it uh, more often when I was uh, blue purple maybe but he didn't he wasn't going so the the, the it was a, it's a bait I wanted to bait him for the triangle and get my right elbow heavy on this side but I think he he knew that it was too good to be true because he wasn't going for the arm uh, triangle and he was pulling my elbow he was pulling my elbow but I had I had my hand on the on the collar so yeah he he has the triangle set up right now well not not the triangle set up but he can go for the triangle here I take my arm out because I realize he's not going to go for the so I like to set him up for like a sweep or a pass or an armbar so he open the legs for me which should make it my job easier to open his legs uh, right there he got the open open guard open guard and then the la again and then we do the la hiva, sit up guard that's the the sequence of Lahiba, sit up guard, half guard, and then he pass. Yeah, when it passes, when it passes, my legs were already super tired at this point. This is the fourth time, like, he. He could not deal with my trap and roll, and I couldn't deal with his de la Hiva. It was a little bit like that. Here I roll, he goes for my back. Uh, yes. Oh, wait, he goes for armbar, maybe. Try to defend the armbar. So I roll from the from the mount, and then he end up on, on this uh, inverted attack to my arm. And I got my arm out. He attempted to pass a knee, knee, knee slide, knee cut, but he uh, he had the the la hiba guard again. And he goes on top here. I'm setting up my col uh, collar choke. I think that distracts him. He let go of my pants. And that, that's a leg drag he did right there. The leg drag and pass. He went to the mount for the. I lost count. I lost count of how many times he went to the mount and I was able to trap and roll him. It's a high mount and he has his uh, feet on my hips. So he was controlling my hips and at the same time he was very high under my armpit so I do the, the back roll and I go for the ankle lock. This is my first opportunity to finish him. Straight ankle lock and I realized that he's out. Oh no, I go again, I go again there. Very pretty tight, the referee is uh, watching the root knee. I let go, I, I didn't have it. He did a good job defending it. I thought I might as well go for it. And there he goes for the mount again. One more time, time of being patient. At this point, oh, also I roll him again. What is he gonna try? He's gonna try to take me to the back, to this side. So we get to this position, and here he's on my back, and I have to defend his attacks from the back now. Attack from the back. He's gonna try to grab my collar, and I'm gonna 
try to prevent that. on top of me but he doesn't have his hooks again he doesn't have his hooks now so I try to bump him forward Christian is there giving me directions I always listen listen to him he's got a good uh, good insight of what's going on and then he's there I'm trying to roll him I'm trying to roll him and stay stay with my elbows stuck uh, my neck protected oh, what happened uh, he rolled, oh, he got my collar and then I had to roll the other way in order to undo the choke. So that's why I rolled the other side and he got to the... Yeah, at this point, uh, there was a point where he actually got my collar and I felt getting tighter. So I had to roll. Here he's going for another uh, choke using his own lapel. My hand is in there though, my hand is in there. Uh, I knew he didn't have it. He knew he didn't have it because he let go. So at this point, I'm, I'm really like getting uh, very tired of his pressure. Right? He keeps, try he keeps trying to he let go now uh, at this point he's I, I escape I escape him out and I sweat him I'm on top trying to get on top trying to get on top what is he doing he's trying to grab my pants he sweeps he sweeps I felt my calves really tired and burning. Luckily, I didn't, I didn't get cramps. I ate a lot of bananas. This is really interesting because he wants the second hand in the collar, but I'm preventing that. I am. Um, so the the crazy uh, philosophy is one hand could be on the collar to, to the fentials, but not two hands. This is a uh, Elio Gracie. Elio Gracie mindset. One hand on the collar is not gonna choke you, but two hands. The second hand is always a problem. So here I escape. Oh, here I have his arm and I'm trying to pull it so his elbow and drive my bottom leg to get to the other side, may, maybe get him on a triangle because my left leg is over his shoulder already, but he got his elbow really heavy. I couldn't pull it. And I lost count. He goes for the mount again. This is not even an hour, I think, into the, into the match. I go there and Uh, trying to grab my jacket to get back on top. I'm on top now. On top. To grab. So we stand up here. Maybe it's already been an hour here. So already we are fighting for one hour. We asked for water and they said water was not allowed. So here we are again, thinking, uh, I don't know what I was thinking here. I wasn't thinking. I was uh, trying to figure out his, uh, his car. So there he goes again. There he goes again for the, the la Hiva. He takes my back. He takes my back. I'm defending. I roll him here. I roll him 
and I'm looking to get on top. I'm actually on the side mount, but he pushed, he got up on his elbow. I'm trying to control the legs, put my left arm, my right arm over him, and he got on his elbow and he escaped the or he regard right there. At this point, he goes back and he put me back into his car. Here we both are pretty much tired, so there I go again to pass once again and I leave again. So maybe I should have tried another pass. But like I said, I really wanted, I didn't want to try to open the car. That's uh, what Hero uh, will always say, Hero Crazy will always say, no. open the car, let them open the car. He sits down, don't open the guard, let him open the guard, so that's what I was trying to do. Here I tried to do like a inverted half guard, but he hooked me and it didn't work. It was for my back. Femi in the neck. His left arm is... Uh, around my back, and I or he got trapped, and I rolled him again. Again, the same, the same thing. I tried to grab his pants and try to get on top of him, but he's doing the push on my armpit, and his right hand has a base, so couldn't uh, couldn't establish the top top position there. So he goes back to the mount. Christian is there, and I roll him again. Drop and roll again, back on top. I think his instructor was there too. Andrew Smith, he is the organizer. This is cool, this was cool to felt to be dragged to the center. It's a good ride. Um, he rolled me again here. He grabbed my pants, used the legs. I shouldn't. But it's, it's good to watch the video because I'm looking at my mistakes too. Or the things that I could have done better. Yeah, again, I roll him back again. I, I lost count of how many times I escaped his mount. Probably the same amount of times that he has my. Oh, here, I, I, he goes for a triangle, my elbow heavy, this is my pass, this is my Helson Gracie pass. So their legs were supposed to be open by now, but they're still close. There they are open, and I'm trying to pass on that side. But he had a good hip movement, so the legs were strong. Keep trying, keep trying. Dragging, dragging, putting pressure on him, putting pressure. I, uh, I thought by now he was passing, passing my legs, was past there. Really, I, I thought that if I would pass, he wouldn't be able to deal with my attacks from the top. But I never had the chance to pass his guard. He was giving me a hard time. There he was again. Yes, pretty much. I'm done at this point. Super tired. New belly. Fending again. I was still in the game though, but uh, my legs were really tired. I never, I never felt my legs so so sore in my life. I I thought he at this point he was gonna be already <coughs> excuse me super tired too. 
he was relentless on his attacks. Could you mount him or no? Uh, I couldn't roll him. Yes, I rolled him. Once again. That was that was the pattern of the of the match. Here uh, he decided to stand up. I pull guard. He tried to pass, but this time instead of passing, something really interesting happened because maybe it wasn't on this one, it was on the next one. But here I, I regard. Once again. Here is the, the beginning of the end for me. Because instead of passing, he he had he was trying to wrap my foot. I was trying to pull his sleeve, but it was too strong to pull his sleeve. And then that that's where he's wrapping my leg. I thought I could escape. He had his uh, left foot trapped, and he was uh, super tight. Uh, Christian told me to roll the other side, and I rolled to the opposite side. And pretty much, he, he got me, and he's praising me for my defenses. So, I needed to beat Gil to win gold medal, and now he beat me. So the situation is this. By the way, the whole fight was about one hour, 30 minutes. This is the situation now. We all submit each other. Kenny submitted Gil. I submitted Kenny. And Gil tapped me out. So what the organizers decided was to start over. Um, we we'll had to fight with each other again. I was totally spent. Susie was telling me to withdraw. She was worried about my, my health. I thought it for a second. I thought not to do the second round again. But then I heard my name to, to be called to go to the mats. And what happened is that they did a new draw and I had to fight Gil again. So after almost an hour and a half of battle, we were facing each other again. I went in there and Spencer told me to use a diving toe hole to counter his de la Hiva hook. We, uh, we also call it the dragon roll. So here we are once again. This is the first fight of the new draw and my third match. Let's see what happens. My grips are gone, I cannot even grip anything. Scar, there I go for it. Go for it, I stay tight on the feet and he taps. I was so happy that the dragon roll did his job. So I beat Gail. I think the match lasted about 20 seconds. And people were surprised to see that we had one of the longest matches in the tournament and also one of the shortest ones. After battling for almost an hour and a half, now on the second the second time I got him in less than a minute but I think that happens that's the nature of guys with same level that sometimes you catch them or they catch you so whoever makes the first mistake loses so for the second fight of the new draw was gonna be Gil versus Kenny and Kenny was rested. He rested for the whole time we were fighting. He was just sitting on the sidelines, just waiting for, for his turn. 
So they went in there, and Kenny on the second match, second fight of the new draw, submitted Gil with a footlock again, and the match lasted maybe less than 10 minutes again. So here we go, both Kenny and I tap out Gil. Now we will have to fight each other to decide who was gonna be the winner. So this is my fourth match, the third fight of the new draw, and this is the final. Whoever wins here, Kenny versus me, the winner was gonna get the gold medal and the loser was gonna get the second place. So I'm there, I'm super tired and let's see what happens. I submitted uh, Ke uh, Kenny the first time we fought but I was already super tired, more tired than him. He was definitely more fresh. He does a single leg and a takedown that is land me on the mat. Um, Susie was calling it an uh, illegal slam, but I don't think so. He picked me up pretty good. Um, like I said, uh, he was definitely more fresh. This is the final match. Uh, he's already on the mount. Going for my collar again. Me and defending and grab and roll. Oompa escape. We used to call it back in the day now. Crazy combat is we call it drop and roll. And I'm on top inside Kenny's car. And we stay there for a while. He opened his car. Stood up again. My legs were gone. Couldn't even stand up. Put my hands up. He goes for that uh, arm drag. Uh, Marcelo Garcia. He goes for the single, but this time I pull guard. I didn't want to be slammed again. And, but I pull guard into half guard. And, uh, my legs really weren't doing the job of hooking. My right leg supposed to hook him and elevate him, but he was definitely stronger and passed my car with ease. And here he's on the knee on belly. I am pretty good at uh, being comfortable with the knee on belly. He does something clever. He turns to attack the feet, something that um, Gil didn't do. Christian is telling me, I, the whole time I was listening to Christian, he's going for the toe holes, and I, every time he was going for the toe hole, I'll put my, my foot again, my, my right foot will go inside, look, and push, my right foot will go and push, and then we got to this kind of inverted uh, upside down guard, he's still going for my foot, I still have my right foot inside, preventing that toe hole. I did feel the, the pressure, but definitely not like tapping. I shrimp out. Uh, Susie, he was uh, telling me to tap. He goes for a knee bar, but it wasn't the knee, it was the side. So Spencer uh, thought that I did a Keenan uh, knee bar defense, but no, really, I just, I just move out. Here I. I'm almost uh, on his back, but he turns, he's still, he's still on the foot, he's still on the foot, but I think I'm pretty much out of it, but he's still going for it, and in doing so, it gives me his collar, I'm going for the collar right now, I try to get on top, I got on top, that's my opportunity to armbar here, um, armbar him, the arm is out like I did the first time, but he goes uh, on force, grab, drive forward, grab my pants, and pass, knee on belly. They move us to the center of the mat, and here I'm trying to deal with his uh, knee on belly. I'm trying to escape here, uh, 
goes for the back. Here I already knew when he was grabbing my collar, he was going to pull me, my feet were ready. I uh, didn't let the second hook, hook to come in for the uh, back. He's going for my feet, he's going for that uh, twister footlock. Well, the thing is with this, Spencer does this a lot. And I pretty much got comfortable with that position, so I uh, managed to get out. But he passed again. Like I said, this at this point is like so basically just not getting tapped and saving my energy as much as I could. The neon belly, he switched to the neon sternum, but I sure if I push, he was off balance. He was off balance, and that gave me the opportunity to to get on top and uh, do that pass, that stack pass I like. And, and driving and driving, definitely his guard was easier to pass than uh, Gilles, I felt. And I'm controlling him, see what I can do. Um, I, I was thinking at this point that I had this only opportunity that I shouldn't let it go. I didn't have this opportunity with Gil for first time, first match. Uh, with Gil, he couldn't get to the side mount. But here I'm in side, uh, Kenny's side mount, trying to work something, work an attack. He bumps. And trying to block his uh, leg from coming. He uh, goes uh, all force, total position, and regard. But on the half guard, I uh, try to smash that leg and keep trying to pass. You see, I, I keep driving that knee, and I pass again. And that's the arm, I have the arm now. I pass and I have the arm, so I'm going for it. Um, I'm thinking I should go for it. His hand was blocking my pen, so I had my right foot on his bicep to break that grip. I wasn't not gonna let that arm go, but he did a good job uh, of turning that way and getting out. So here, he escaped my side mount armbar combo yeah, his open guard he's not doing the de la Hiva anymore with me um, grabbing my sleeves this thing is still going. trying to I could not break his grips well, we're very tight trying to sit up maybe push the legs up drive my hips forward he, he kicked me right there but I'm on his pants so and I pass the half guard right now, and I keep keep trying to pass right there. Keep trying to pass. Uh, I think he is trying to get the underhook with his right arm. Uh, not yet. I'm still passing there. Oh, I have the underhook. Forward. This is a half guard situation, but that's when he he switched it on me. He he escaped the back door. He underhook, get your underhook back. He did like a back door escape, and he got out of my pass. So he got to the mount, and he was uh, going for the cross collar choke. This point, I'm defending. I I saw it coming. I mean, he wasn't uh, being uh, like setting it up in a way that he would distract me. He was just grabbing and just trying to force it, and then that that left uh, space for me to to escape. And here, kind of X bar, but Kenny is not. Get swept um, again. He's that uh, inverted knee on belly. Watch your leg. Still looking for my for my feet. I try to grab his his Watch hand, but uh, 
try to grab his pants so he doesn't cross the knee over. Try to push, get my feet heavy, try to he grab my one foot, I'll bring the other foot to push and free my Toholes. Toholes are, are really good because you can get it from different positions. Toholes are always there. And then he sits. I think he's going for knee bar. I'm crossing my feet just in case. He goes to knee on belly, but half guard, knee on belly. See how I couldn't even move. Like go back to this. So he did a little distraction there like he was going for knee belly and went back to the knee bar but uh, he sat down in a weird position that I was able to hook I lift his leg and that's how I got on top he I go my my free and my legs are free and then I go for the arm bar right away his arm was exposed and he's doing that back roll uh, my leg was heavy, hopefully. Towards his head. And then I'm, I'm pretty much the arm is extended. Uh, he's grabbing his own gi, and I'm just trying to be patient. He got the head out. My left leg goes over his shoulder, and I'm going for the armbar. There was a point where I decided uh, to go on top and maybe try a mounted triangle. Triangle, triangle. But he rolled towards me, so I got the triangle from the bottom, Fish. which turned out Fish. to be even better. It wasn't quite <laughs> locked. Do it, I had to re, uh, reestablish the, the triangle there. I'm holding my knee, pulling my, my shin, and being patient. His elbow was uh, open, which uh, left the space on his neck. And I was just there, gonna be patient. That was my opportunity to tap him. I thought if this doesn't tap him, that would have been all for me. Because I think my legs were pretty much gone at this point. Just holding it there. He didn't uh, try to stack. He was more into bringing his left elbow down and heavy on my right thigh, so he will have an opening for his, for his neck. Christian is telling me to pull the arm across, and, and, and that's when I could do it. He, he was framing on his head, and he let me pull the arm across, and I went for it, and he tapped. I got him in a triangle, and I got the gold medal. I beat Kenny, I beat Gil. Nice. And that was it. That was the final match. Gold medal, brown belt. Buena man. Buena man. Call this. It's all for all the guys at the basic, okay? Keep training, especially for Jay. Where would you, man? Be strong. This is for my family in Peru. My instructor, Pablo, Dan Wallen, Tony Waldecker. Come on. All my students. Thank you for your support. My girlfriend Susie. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty happy. I felt like like Rocky Balboa or Hoyce Gracie after beating Kimo there. But a little bit is has something to do with it because it was, I think I was the, the lightest guy and also the oldest guy there. That was uh, supposed to be my division. I was supposed to be light division. Hiron Gracie, thank you for your words. I couldn't have done it without your, your advice, man. Hannah Gracie, all the Gracie family for the inspiration. This is a score for you. So yeah, I was pretty excited there. This is definitely one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. I also uh, would like to thank uh, Dave Patton. He was uh, David Patton. He's, he was one of my instructors at Fireworks. Um, he was there also and he gave me words of encouragement. Finally, I'd like to invite the 
people who wants to learn jiu-jitsu and live near Leesburg, Virginia, come and visit the basics Gracie Jiu-Jitsu in Leesburg, Virginia. We are a Health and Gracie Association and also a Gracie Academy Certified Training Center. We teach uh, Jiu-Jitsu to people with no experience at all. We teach you from zero the basics. We also have the kids program and the women's self-defense program. We um, are followers of the Keep It Playful mindset of Professor Hiron Gracie. Uh, also, uh, we'd like you to invite and check out gracieuniversity.com. That's uh, some of the techniques that I use. I learned it uh, from Gracie University. Uh, especially check out uh, class number one, the trap and roll. I use that throughout the whole tournament. Um, and all, of course, other techniques that I learned throughout the years, uh, Master Helson Gracie, uh, defense of the cross collar chokes and be safe. And pretty much we uh, follow the philosophy of the Gracie family, Grandmaster Ilo Gracie. Don't forget, if you don't lose, you will eventually win. Thank you, everybody.